Thank you, Ms. Somya, for taking your time out to speak with us on the upcoming uh, budget. Let me first uh, start off by asking, uh, how do you help this uh, the upcoming union budget to help consumer companies achieve higher growth? And how and what announcements in this budget could actually help consumer companies actually, you know, see some kind of revival because there's been stress on the sector. Okay, first, uh, thanks, Jolene, for having me here. Basically, the mood is one of cautious optimism. Uh, consumers are expecting the economy to continue to grow, uh, especially the more affluent sections and the older sections. But there is some amount of concern around inflation and around uh, job loss. Uh, so if you put the two and two together and then look at what probably would help from the budget, uh, from a budget standpoint, what uh, probably the industry is looking for, especially the consumer good industry, would be to uh, revive. Actually, the industry hasn't has been under some stress, but not all that much. So if you see the value growth has been consistent and now volume growth is also starting to come back. Commodity prices have eased a bit. So uh, it, it is in, in a situation where we are expecting recovery to happen. So I think what the industry would be looking for uh, from the budget would be how to spur consumer demand, put money back into the hands of the consumers and make them feel confident about spending. I think that would be the single biggest uh, thing. Now, that can be through multiple ways. In rural, it would be through uh, whatever it is, direct transfers, do uh, programs that can create more jobs. I think rural rural is going to be vital next this year uh, to, to actually keep the momentum going as far as demand is concerned. And uh, urban, I think the expectation is it will hold steady as long as there is nothing which is uh, going to be, uh, as long as taxes don't increase, I think consumers don't are not expecting taxes to increase. And they are probably expecting some amount of rebates also on um, healthcare costs have gone up. Uh, there are concerns around that. So some amount of rebate, some amount of positive sentiment uh, through the budget that can spur consumption. I think that is that would be the expectation. You've touched upon the fact that the government needs to put more money in the hands of the consumer. But at this point, if you have to, because you get a sense, because you deal with all the consumer companies, you could get a sense of, you know, what would be right now the top ask uh, that the industry has from the FM at this point in time, just ahead of the budget or, you know, from the budget, in fact? I think balanced uh, growth. I think that's what every uh, everybody from the consumer good industry has been saying. And it was balanced growth across all sectors, all markets and uh, job creation, because finally it is when uh, for consumer good industry, what you need is volume of demand. And that can only happen if there is uh, there are jobs getting created, there is money in the hands of the consumer to go out and spend. So I don't, I mean, obviously rebate, GST breaks, et cetera. I mean, those, I, I, I don't think, now, I, again, I'm speaking from my our point of view, which is not coming from, uh, uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not speaking on behalf of the consumer industry. Uh, please appreciate that. This is more from a consumer standpoint. So what will make consumers spend money is a lot more uh, confidence about future that jobs are going to be protected, that inflation is going to ease, and there will be money flowing to them. So I think that is exactly what the industry would also look uh, forward to. We've already started with a, a stress point, which is rural demand. We are seeing green shoots right now. Volume recovery is being seen. But do you expect this to continue? Because companies are still calling out that the growth ahead is still going to be value-led. Do you expect, mm. but you know, since there is a recovery in volumes, will this continue through the rest of the year? Expectation is it will. Uh, and uh, uh, I mean, and that is the trickiest part because uh, wheat prices, I think, are still not, have still not come down. But uh, the other, I think sugar is stable, palm oil is soft. So commodity prices are softening, which will allow them to pass on the benefit to the consumers. Uh, so there would be an easing of prices, which has been the single biggest uh, deterrent to uh, growth in the past. Plus, if you look at it, when the FMCG companies did take up pricing, uh, it has pretty much sustained. It hasn't been as bad. The impact hasn't been as bad as one would have feared. So to that sense, consumers are in the mood to spend. They are in the mood. I think post-COVID consumers have been in a consistent mood to spend money. Uh, and, and therefore, the expectation would be that that would continue. And uh, rural, of course, I think the government will have to just spend money to spur, uh, to, to create jobs, to spur, to, to give direct monies back to the uh, consumers, to, to, to correct some of the supply chain challenges that are there uh, as well. 
uh, which have emerged over time. I think that expectation would be there. Uh, so I, I, I think I mean, cautious optimism on all sides. In the past budget, do you think consumer uh, consumer companies were happy with what was announced because or the demands were met in any way so that you know demand was revived? Because that because we've seen that uh, demand has been under pressure actually since twenty nineteen. It's been on and off. So uh, in, the, in the past, have you seen that kind of, uh, you know, the budget actually responding to it in any way and easing the pain? I of think, uh, consumers have been happy with the budget. Our survey is telling us that the consumers were happy with the last budget. And uh, yeah, demand has been under a bit of a stress, but we are performing better than the rest of the world. And we are expecting to continue to perform better than the rest of the world. So uh, I uh, wouldn't say that uh, you know we haven't done enough because clearly uh, whatever has been done has been able to protect us from the headwinds that are there across the world to the extent possible. And the expectation would be that uh, those will continue with the policies that will keep uh, India in, in a safe space and keep spurring the domestic consumption. We are still expected to grow fastest in the world even this year. Companies have been talking about India as an ideal destination for investment at this point. Uh, do you agree? And how can the government make things better? First is, yeah. I mean, the McKinsey CEO said that this is India's century. So we are uh, going to definitely reap the demographic dividend at this moment in time. And this is not just about 2023 or 2024. It's, go it's, it's a midterm, long-term thing. India is going to be the investment destination, especially with uh, the challenges that China has seen. I think there is a shift in sentiment towards India. What the government can do is just make it easier to do business, uh, whether it comes to our uh, labor, and they are trying their best. I mean, whether it comes to our uh, labor laws or, I mean, some there have been some back and forth because it's not easy in India to go through with many policy changes. But, uh, but the continuity in the government, the stability in the government and the continuity of policies and the business-friendly uh, uh, nature uh, which is seen by the rest of the world is is and as long as we can continue that, uh, we should be okay. What do you think would be important to come out from this budget so that companies right now invest more? I think no surprises, no nasty surprises for sure. So no increase in taxes, no increase in uh, I mean, I mean tax breaks would be great, but at least no increase in taxes, no increase in uh, I mean GST and nothing which is. Uh, going to at least have a negative impact because I think we are expecting recovery to happen. Uh, actually, we are already recovering. I think we are expecting it to be a uh, spur. And maybe some uh, big ticket uh, investment, uh, infrastructural investments, big ticket announcements, which, which, which gives the feeling that there's going to be a lot of government expenditure, especially in the rural areas. Uh, announcements around job creation. I think those are the kind of expectations that uh, that would help. While the consumer sector trajectory during the pandemic has not been even, do you think the government did enough to step in and actually revive demand or even help ease pain of the consumer and also for consumer companies? I think the government has, uh, I mean, I, I'm repeating again, Charlie, the government has maintained continuity in policies and uh, not done any knee-jerk reaction to anything and which has actually led India have a much better uh, trajectory of recovery post-COVID than, than many other countries. And in a difficult global environment where there is war, their fuel prices have gone up. I mean, there are some challenges like uh, rupee has weakened, etc. But at an overall level, our domestic economy is still strong. And... Uh, to that extent, uh, I, th I think we have done whatever was possible. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Tomia, for taking the time out to speak with us. Thanks. Thanks, Shirley. Thank you. My pleasure. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.